subject. So my title is again, Field Risk Mitigation. I will not present any rocket science, I will do some short overview actually. Um, about what every refinery or what, what you can do with uh, the refinery equipment you already have in place, what you can do to get to low free CPD and low political acceptance. First, I will have a short look again uh, why we have a focus on certain oil. I will only go very quickly through that because the speakers before me already mentioned that. Um, then I will go in quite a detail to the refining process and then we will discuss some obstacles and some things that doesn't really fit together when we go to the, the low premium CBD values and the performance. Well, first let's have a look at this graph here. So this is a yearly consumption of uh, oils in 2015 and we see that soybean oil and palm oil are the most predominantly used oil in the world. If we look at these values here, I show them again, we saw them before. These are the three MCTD levels and glycerol ester levels in different oils. So these are basically the same oils I put together there. And we see there that we have here high three MCTD values of palm oil, high glycerol ester values of palm oil, plus we have some high consumption of palm oil, which means palm oil particularly the potential risk factor when we come to three MCTD and glycerol ester. And it's more a risk factor than other oils. So if you're refining soy or canola oil or whatever, you might have a problem with three MCTD and glycerol ester risk factor is a different one than you, when we are talking about palm oil. Well, so if you look at this slide now, you would think I can solve completely my 3MCPD problem by just uh, using no palm oil anymore and using other oils. Um, the question is, is that correct? Well, here's an example of a filling pack, which is a soft filling pack actually, which is used for, for bakery products. It's also used for, for Nougat Express, for example. Well, the first version of that that was on the market was purely based on palm oil and some crystallizers actually. And you see with that you have some uh, the 3 MCBD values uh, between, that's a gray color by the way, between uh, 3 and 4 milligrams per kilo, that's the same as PPM. And we have uh, much higher glycerol ester levels between, well, 7 was a good value for this product, right? So, so uh, it can even be higher. The thing that has been done by the refiners and also by us is uh, that we took out the glycerol esters. I will show you later how that works. And we ended up with a product which was also based on palm oil. It had exactly the same technological properties, but then it was almost uh, free of glycerol esters. So this really PPD level still was the same in the end. So this was not the solution for everything because our customers wanted to have low 3 CBD levels and low PE levels. So what we then, then did, we turned around and said, okay, we take the non palm solution, or we take a little bit of palm in there, and then you see the other colors there. You have a blend of palm and grapefruit, and you have one palm free solution. And we, you see, if you do that properly, you end up with almost the same very low GE levels and very low free MCPD levels. Which means, yes, if you take out the palm, it gives you some better uh, starting point to make low free MCPD products. But if you do a blend, you still can have the low 3 MCBD values and the non palm product is not necessarily better. So then we have here in the end another product, which is basically exactly the same one as the first one, but this is refined in a completely different way. This is made by caustic refining, which means actually, if you can have a palm product, you can have exactly the same product, you can have 100% palm and still have very low 3 MCBD values when you do that in the right way. And I go now through the refining processes and try to explain how you can do that. So originally palm oil was refined in this way, so this is the standard physical refining process. So what you do actually, you take the crude oil, then you do just the bleaching, and then you do the deodorization. And in this is the physical refining process that has been done for palm for years actually, you take out all the free fatty acids in the deodorization step, which means to get rid of all the free fatty acids, you have to apply quite a high temperature to get rid of all the free fatty acids. And again, palm oil, constantly mentioned that before, can have four, five, or six percent of free fatty acids, which means there's a lot of free fatty acids that you have to remove. So this does not work with very low temperatures. So the better way to do it would be caustic refining. And in this way, you take the crude oil, and then you wash the palm oil with a caustic solution, with a sodium hydroxide coated solution, then do the bleaching and then do the, 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 do the deodorization. And then finally you have your fantastic palm oil RBD. Um, what advantages does this methodology have actually? Well, the 
first thing you do is, in the caustic washing step, you take out the free fatty acids, which, which means that in the deodorization step, you can use much lower temperatures. And that, thus, don't make that much glycid out esters or similar. And the other thing is, we discovered that with the caustic washing, you also wash out some of the precursors, which means you have two points where you improve the quality regarding glycid out esters and free MCDD if you do a caustic refining. If you don't believe this data, I put it a little bit together here on the right side. Uh, you have three different palm oils, so the red one, if you go down there, this is a standard palm oil physically refined, and you normally end up with something like 3.5 or 4 milligrams per kilogram of 3 MCDD, plus something between 4 and 10 milligrams per kilogram glycid oil esters. If you just do a caustic refining, which is, we call that palm oil RTD, it's just caustic refined palm oil, but theorized at the standard temperatures, you see that it's already going down, so you have already low GE values and low 3 MCDD values. And then the green one is a so-called, we call it palm CR. This is a caustic refined palm oil, and that is theorized at pretty low temperatures. And you end up with very low 3 MCBD levels and with glycid oil ester levels, which are currently below the detection limit. I'm sure that uh, Mr. Kuhlmann will develop a method very soon, but then we can find the glycid oil esters in those products again. But basically, it's possible to have very low GE products also in the palm-based product. The problem with this process is, if you do caustic refining, you will have a lot of soap, you will have to separate it, and you will have a yield loss, which means this comes with an increased effort and increased cost of your refining process. But maybe it's worthwhile doing that. Okay, the next thing you could do is the so-called polishing. We discussed that before, but I show you the slide again. Most people, or a lot of people in Europe and a lot of people in the USA, import palm oil already as a refined oil from the origin, which means from Indonesia or Malaysia. And in this oil, there is already glycid oil esters present because it has been refined, and there is also a 3 MCPT present. What you can do is just take this oil, hit it with an acid activated bleaching clay, and you will see that your glycid oil esters under the right conditions will just disappear. Of course, if you bleach your oil, you will have some taste of bleaching clay in your product, and that you have to remove. So, but you can re-deodorize the product. It does not necessarily need high temperatures to get rid of that taste. And then you end up with what we see here below. The, the sweet CBD remains the same, but the glycid oil you can take out almost completely. The other thing, when you use bleaching clays, there's one thing we have to watch actually, and that's the chlorine content in the bleaching clay. You can bring in chloride through the bleaching clay into your process, and that actually, if you exceed a certain number, will also increase your 3 MCBD value. It's not that drastic then from the uh, organic chlorine precursors that we have naturally in the palm oil, but it is very significant. So you see here we have some on the left side the, the chloride content, the dry matter of the bleaching clay. We took nine different clays. Two of them had quite high levels of uh, chlorine, and we see in the refining trial, they all kind of refined in the same way. We see that there are some peaks of high 3 MCBD levels, which uh, really go together with high levels of chlorine in the bleaching clay. That's one other technology where you can completely mitigate glycid oil esters and uh, 3 MCBD in your oil, and that is the chemical ratification. So let's have a look. We take the crude palm oil in the beginning and we refine it just in the standard way and end up with a palm oil RBD with high 3 MCPD and high glycid oil ester levels. If you now undergo a caustic re uh, sorry, uh, chemical interestification, you see that you will break down all the 3 MCPD, but you will make a huge amount of glycid oil ester. So see, these are 30 milligrams per kilogram glycid oil ester. So this is really a high amount. And if you leave it in the reactor, you can even go to 300 if you want to do that. Uh, it's not the recommendation to do that, keep the, the interestification time as short as possible. Um, but you will, even though if you do a chemical interestification, you end up with very high glycid oil ester levels. But we saw before, if we hit this with the acid activating bleaching clay, we can basically take out the glycid oil ester. So that brings us to the next step, to the IV palm bleach, which is the interestifying palm oil bleach. So you still keep the 3 MCPD <coughs> levels that you made in the interestification. You take out all the glycid oil esters, so basically you, you end up with an interestified and bleached palm oil, which does not contain 3 MCPD and only a low amount of glycid oil esters. And if you deodorize it then in the right way with quite low temperatures, you can have quite a good product uh, with basically no GD and basically no 3 MCPD levels. But the problem with that is that an interestified product 
is not really a palm oil. So it's different in crystallization, it's different in the solid fat content, it's just not the normal palm oil, it's interratified palm oil, so it's a slightly different product than we had before. Let's have a look at another important parameter, which is refining temperature. So we took the crude palm oil here, took exactly the same dosage of bleaching clay, the same bleaching clay, and refined it at just different temperatures. <coughs> And you see here that between 170, 180, 180, and even 200 degrees, you only have a very small development of glycidol acids. But once you get higher and higher, it, it starts increasing. And you see at 230, 250, 240, it's increasing very quickly, actually. And imagine this, this slope, of course, it continues. So if you go to 270 degrees, which is, by the way, not in, in unusual temperature in some pine refineries, they go up to those temperatures, you have a very quick development of glycidol esters. So if you want to limit your, your development of glycidol esters, just keep the temperature as low as possible and you will get that. The other thing is also that there is a certain relationship between the pressure and the temperature, because if you have your vacuum low enough in the deodorizer, you can even strip out some glycidol esters. So here we have an example. We refined that at 217 degrees and 2 millibars in the deodorizer in our pilot plant. And we left it there for one hour. There was not a lot happening. But then, after a while, it was reduced and reduced and reduced. And actually, for every deodorizer, you can find the right parameter where, with the right pressure and temperature relationship, where your development speed of glycidol esters is slower than your evaporation speed. If you find that point, you can basically make a zero glycidol ester product if you, you leave it long enough in your deodorizer. This is just another example that basically shows the same. So on the left side, we have a palm oil which has been refined by two, at 250 degrees and 3 millibar, and we ended up with 3.6 milligrams per kilogram of glycidol ester. And then we took the same deodorizer and made it a little bit tighter um, and reduce the pressure to one millibar, and you see at 250 degrees you go below one milligram per kilogram, which is already quite nice. But then if you increase the temperature again, the speed of TE formation increases again, and if you do at 250 degrees and one millibar, you again have high glycidol ester levels. So that again shows you have to find the right temperature pressure relationship to have low glycidol esters. So this is a little bit depending on the deodorizer design. So if you have three deodorizers, A, B, C, the parameters that work for deodorizer A might not be applicable to deodorizer B and C. So you have to check every deodorizer you have in your plant and find the right parameters for that. But it's quite a work and quite an effort, but probably it makes sense to have a look at that. It's also depending on the food material quality. We heard that before, low FFA levels, low levels of deacylglycerols, this makes sense actually to have on the palm oil because then you have a better uh, starting point to, to make your uh, palm oil. And it's also a little bit depending on the end product quality. Well, that brings us to the object that I wanted to discuss. And I show you a little um, slide here. It's a little bit difficult to read, but I try to explain <coughs> that. So we have four colors. In the first, we have the substance group. In the second one, we have the impact on quality, which means this substance group, what does it do to my oil? Do I want to have it or do I not want to have it? In the third row, we see how this group, the substances, change in the deodorizer. And then in the fourth column, we see what do I need to do to optimize it, actually. Let's go through it just for a better understanding for the 3 mcdb So 3 mcdb do I want to have that in my product? No, I don't want to have 3 mcdb in my product. That is why I put negative in here. It has a negative impact on my product quality. And how does it change in the deodorizer? Well, for 3 mcdb the formation temperature is quite low. So normally, it slightly increases or it does not change. So, so for 3 mcdb you would even say my deodorizer conditions are OK. So I, I keep it where it is. For glycidol esters, I also don't want to have glycidol esters in my product. So that's why I put here negative on there also. Um, the other thing is, we saw that I can either decrease or, or increase the temperature depending on my pressure. So I have to find the right temperature to the pressure ratio. So I want to have a certain temperature here depending on the pressure I have in my deodorizer. So I have to fix a, a temperature here. But then there are other substances in the oil, like natural antioxidants and vitamins. This is made of basically tocopherols and tocopherols. I want to have them in my product. I want to keep all the tocopherols. They give me vitamins, they are healthy, they give the oil stability. It's great to have them in. But what happens in the deodorizer, they decrease. You're decreasing your tocopherols in your deodorizer. 
So actually, to keep that in, I want to add a little temperature in my field blender. But the opposite is for some other compounds, and they also come with your oil. So there might be pesticides in the oil. There might be color. So in palm oil, we do a heat bleaching. So if we don't exceed a certain temperature, the palm oil stays dark. There is an unpleasant taste in most oils, so I wanted to have it deodorized out. And there might be mineral oil issue, uh, mineral oil residues also in the oil. These are all negative. I don't want to have that in. And I can deodorize them out, which means normally I would turn up the temperature of my deodorizer as far as possible to get rid of those, uh, those compounds. That means I want to have a higher temperature here in the deodorizer. And if we now look at the required change column at the last column here, we see there's whole temperature, fixed pre temperature, lower temperature, higher temperature. So there are some kind of contradiction. That's, that's the problem. I can have low 3 MCBD values. I can have low GE values. I can do everything. But this comes together with a quality change in my final product. And this brings me to my final slide here, which doesn't show any numbers, but it shows you something else. So whatever you do to your 3 MCBD, you can reduce your 3 MCBD and you can reduce your lithium ether. But whatever you do, it will come with a change in other parameters, which means it will come with a change in color, definitely. It will probably come with a change in residual con contaminants, which is, to me, not acceptable because we don't want to have any residual contaminants in the oil. It comes um, with a lot of natural antioxidants, probably, or maybe. And finally, it comes together with an increased effort of refining, which means the palm oil will be more expensive in the end. You will not have the same cheap price for palm oil that we used to have since years because we have to do, put more effort into the refining to make low GE and low 3 MCBD values finally. And that's it. That's that I'm concluding the session here, or not the session, but my presentation. And uh, if you have questions, please ask them.